Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. And this is Seller Roundtable number 74 and we are super excited to have Tomer Rabanovich, Sean Tomer, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good to be here. Yeah. So um, we're going to start out with, uh, we, we love to get a little bit of background on our guests, uh, kind of, uh, you know, where you're from, where you grew up, uh, you know, kind of what led you up to, uh, you know, where you are now. How much time do you have? <laughs> yeah, everyone says that. I'm like, hey, go go at it. It's it's always, no, it's no, always yeah, interesting I'm, to get the backstory. Yeah, yeah. So I actually started uh, with no background in online sales, no money in the bank either. Uh, did an online course starting out. Uh, had a day job back then, helping basically small businesses uh, to grow in like a government job. It was a very boring position, even though it sounds interesting, but it's not really. Uh, stayed there for two years, quit, and did Amazon since around 2016. Uh, been also consulting seven, eight figure sellers, having my own brands on Amazon as well. And uh, yeah, speaking around the world when that was still possible, uh, but still doing it right now virtually as much as I can. So yeah, great to be here. Awesome. So um, <clears throat> in terms of, of e-commerce, give us a, a little bit more background in uh, like leading up to your journey, how you got into Amazon. Was it one of those where you just kind of stumbled onto it? Uh, did you have a friend? I, I always love to hear kind of how people heard about Amazon and got into it. Yeah. So for me, I mean, in Israel, you have to join the military. So I did three and a half years in intelligence. And when I was there, I was reading a lot of business books. That's what kind of I wanted to do. And I was also a magician. Uh, that was my profession. Like for a while, I was a professional magician since I was 17. And I knew this is kind of what I always uh, want to do when it comes to having a business and not have like a day job or whatever. And then what happened after graduating college, I saw this like Facebook post by Robert Kiyosaki and he actually uh, like affiliated, I didn't know what that was back then, but he affiliated ASM and he said, this is the first thing I'm affiliate, like I'm advertising it is not my own thing. And I'm like, okay, this might be a real thing. That was like a few thousand dollars. And I remember coming up to my wife and uh, she was my girlfriend back then. We lived in her parents' attic because we didn't have any money. Um, and I said, what do you think? This is all the money I have in the bank, but what do you think I should do? And I didn't know like what I should do anyway. And she said, yeah, I think you should go for it. Uh, and yeah, so I think if she would say no, I would probably not be here right now. So yeah, I owe a lot to her as well uh, with this. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of how, how it got started. Uh, and after a year, that was actually the first Prime Day. And the day after Prime Day, I came to my boss and said, look, I'm quitting. And he's like, why? So I said, well, I just made my salary in profit yesterday. So I think it's time to like leave. And he said, what do you want? And I said, if you let me work from home, I'm going to stay. So they actually changed my position. And I barely did any work uh, for another year. And then he actually quit. So that was the time to really uh, let that go and just stick with Amazon. So that's kind of how it all started. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, uh, it's funny. Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people kind of have that same journey in terms of, for me, you know, it was like sticking with my day job for way too long, you know, and, and, um, and, and not going full Amazon uh, earlier because I think that would have definitely changed the game in terms of, you know, putting all your time and effort into it. So, um, and it's scary. I know same thing with Amy, you know, she kind of was, was dabbling in Amazon um, and, and still had her day job. And, you know, I remember talking to her and her being like, I'm going to do it. And I was like, yeah, do it, do it, do it. It's like, it's funny. It's like one of those, uh, once you do it, then anybody who talks about it, you're, it's like, you know, it's almost like peer pressure. Like, yes, you have to. But the reason is, <laughs> why people are so strongly, uh, you know, encourage people is because, you know, once you have this lifestyle, once you work for yourself, once you realize how many different ways that you can make money outside of a nine to five job, that going back to that just seems like almost crazy. You're like, really, you're gonna, you know, like going back, like, you know, I would go back to a nine to five if I absolutely have to, but you know, to support my family. I think most of us here would, but I, I, <laughs> Not me. <laughs> but I, I have it. I have it. I have enough confidence in myself to, you know, these days to know that, you know, I, 
that that would be I mean, it would have to be some really crazy stuff going on. It's not going to happen. It's not yeah, I, just, I, I, don't, I also I don't think it so. has to do, you know, with my liabilities back then. I had, you know, no kids, nothing. So right, it didn't right. really matter. I mean, all the money was reinvested in the business anyway. Yep. And then we paid like cheap rent and whatever. So it was like zero risk, you know, like real totally. risk. In life. So yeah. if I look now when I have like two small kids and everything, it's completely different. If I had a nine to five right now, that will be so much more difficult Yep. Because I would need that steady income every month, that paycheck. And it's, it's getting more and more difficult to like leave that uh, yep. depending where you're at in your life. Basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have three little ones too. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's funny because, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, when I was in my 20s and, and even early 30s, it was like I would easily work you know, 24 hours in one stint sitting in front of my computer. You know, I was doing a lot of coding back then. And uh, nowadays it's like, I, you know, by the time evening comes around, it's just like, I just want to sink into the couch. I'm exhausted. Right. From yeah. each kid is, is like owning your own Amazon brand, right. <laughs> more or even more, you know? So right now I, I have between the Amazon business and the software, it's like, I have six jobs right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, and Tomer, what year was that, that you started with ASM? Uh, I did the course at the end of 2014, launched my first product in March, 2015. Um, wow. Yeah. Never so, forget your first, right? That's what they say. So that's kind of exactly. That's awesome. So, you know, would you, I'm sure you agree that Amazon has completely changed when course, in 2014, yeah. when you put a product out there, like we had a lot of overnight millionaires. We had a lot of people that were just, they could basically pick just about any product and put it out there and it would sell like crazy. And nowadays, you know, it's a lot harder because there's just such a huge influx. I mean, as many as 3000 new sellers on Amazon every day. And a lot of our audience that's trying to get in to Amazon, trying to get started, they are stuck in analysis paralysis. And I know you teach a lot now about choosing the right products and about helping people scale their businesses. And you're working with seven and eight figure sellers. And I'm just wondering, do you, what advice do you have for those people trying to get in to Amazon that are stuck in analysis paralysis and are just not finding that product that they can feel good about launching. Yeah. So first of all, I will say that you like, if you are in all of the Facebook groups as all, all of us are, you kind of hear all of the negative uh, talk that is going on and you don't really hear the success stories because those guys are just working uh, every day, all day long and just making a lot of money on Amazon. So those people are, believe me, they do exist. Okay. Uh, first of all, and they also, it doesn't mean they have been on Amazon for five years, seven years, whatever. They have, like, I know a lot of sales that actually launched a few months ago, a year ago, and are killing it on Amazon. So that's not something you should really worry about. Now, when it comes to starting, I can say, again, from my own experience, that a lot of sellers, even like probably most sellers, their first product failed, you know? And when I say failed, that is different for everyone. But in most cases, that doesn't mean that if you put like $5,000 in your initial investment, that doesn't mean you lost $5,000. You probably got some of it back or all of it back, broke even, got a little profit, lost a bit, but then you went on to the second product. So what I can say, this is what I kind of advise to people that talk to me about Amazon. Now, I don't affiliate any course. I don't have anything that I can say about positive or negative about any like how to sell Amazon courses because I only consult active sellers. I don't have any programs for how to sell on Amazon. But what I, what I do tell them is first, do you like your day job? Is this something like, because this is a business, this is not like uh, something you can do part-time anymore. This is something that you have to go all in with. Now it might take you a year or two years to quit your job, but this should be your end goal. This is not real estate here. This is not something you can just do on the side. So that's the first thing. If this is what you want, if this is the lifestyle you want to have, then that's step one. Step two is not think about that one product because that's not a business. My, maybe some courses tell you you need one product and that's it. Uh, but in reality, you need more than that in order to keep growing. You have to keep launching products for your business to grow. So I tell them, think about three products. Now, obviously you're not gonna launch them at the same time, but let's say you have $10,000 to invest. You probably wanna put around $3,000 for your first inventory around that number, because if it works, you need more money uh, in the bank to invest in that second stock. And if it doesn't work, you want to liquidate 
and then go for that second product with another three thousand dollars and until this day i don't think i saw anyone failing miserably with no success at all with three products one after the other and don't think about that brand you want to build or that dream business you want to have looking for that first product just look for something that works that you think is going to make some money and just launch it because you're going to learn so much more from having a product on amazon than just keeping looking for products and the perfect product doesn't exist and if it does it's going to be saturated tomorrow morning anyway so just launch something that makes sense and then learn from that and just look at that as your uh tuition here that like to get into this uh world of amazon because this is your investment here and to invest ten thousand dollars even if it all goes you know if any of it all goes away that's still a very low investment in any business that you open so that's I kind of i think the mindset that you want to have when you go into this business and not necessarily i mean i've seen this so many times like someone launches one product it goes okay but then they have the idea of the brand but that idea of the brand wouldn't come if they didn't have that first product so right. you must do it this way i think so you're thinking, I know one exercise that we do in my course is I tell people, okay, if you were going to open up a store and, you know, a whole store of products, you're going to open up a little boutique in your town, wherever you are, and you wanted people to not go to the big box store, but to actually come and visit your store, what would it look like? And what kind of products could you name a couple of products that you put in yeah. that store? So, so if you're into pet goods or something like yeah, that, yeah. Right? I, I understand that. And I, I hear that from different like uh, speakers and also friends of mine, and everything. And I think that's great. If you are passionate about products. Now I'm not passionate about almost any product out there, to be honest, I don't really care what it is that I sell. Okay. My real passion is actually Amazon. So, and I think that's completely okay. I like this lifestyle. I like Amazon. I like selling on Amazon. It saves me a whole bunch of time. I don't want to do retail. I don't want to do Shopify. I just want to sell on Amazon because it's so much easier than anything else out there. Uh, it is difficult still, right? Amazon is difficult, but it's so much easier than almost anything else. I didn't go to Amazon to do retail. I went to Amazon to do Amazon. So, uh, so I, I have a passion about, and I'm just saying what your method is completely okay. If yeah. someone has well, that product, if it's that's just a, a method. Product, so it's not course, a method for starting a retail store. It's a method that. for I, starting I, your I, storefront. But of course, of course, yeah. Curious I, though, you mentioned like that. Yeah. You mentioned though people, that yeah. you don't care whether or not you know the niche that you're selling in. You're just really focused on being able to scale any product on Amazon. Um, so you think in terms of you know, people choosing products that they can choose products that they don't know the market for, or do you think that they should at least try and study some of the yeah, market? So I can tell, like, again, I did a course and they told me the same thing. They told me, go for your passion, launch that product if it works and everything. And I used to sell magic kits in kiosks in the US for like nine months. And I said, okay, this is easy. I'm just going to sell magic kits. And I looked at the numbers and those didn't make sense at all. Uh, and also, I mean, magic tricks become problematic when they can refund uh, after they know the secret. So that's not a good thing. And I mean, you can sell some tools and gimmicks and everything, but that is really was really saturated already with some big brands that are known and everything. So I knew like, okay, this is like my only passion. So what am I doing now? So I just went to a completely different niche that I have nothing to do with and that worked and that's fine. And I think you, I agree, you have to know your customer and you can talk to other people who are your target customers and everything, but it doesn't have to be you. Your passion can entirely be Amazon and that's more than enough. And I can also be the first to tell you that it's completely okay to just sell on Amazon. There is so much money to be made there. It's completely fine. And you don't have to go. I spent so much money on Shopify and other like uh, shiny objects that didn't work out. Um, and it's, uh, yeah. It's for the better, I think. So. I love that you're giving folks permission to do that. That's awesome. So, all right. So the advice for people is choose three products and start with, you know, and, and don't, don't be afraid. Three. I mean, choose one, but be ready to like have two more afterwards if that doesn't work out, because that's your real investment here. This is part of the learning process. And I love how you focus on like, hey, you're dropping 10 grand, but 10 grand is really a small amount of money when you think about starting a business, investing in something and learning along the way. Now, what about those folks? Okay, we've got our first three products. 
now we're, we're some of them have taken off. We're, we're trying to figure out where do we go from here? What's your advice for those people trying to start with, you know, to take those first couple of products that they have for their brand and scale? Yeah, so what happened with me, I mean, I launched my first product, it was successful. And then I was like, okay, I understand Amazon now. I mean, this is it. This is like, I have it by now. This is, a, this is great. I'm doing a lot of money and everything. Everything is great. And then I launched like four more products and they all failed. And then I was like, okay, I was just lucky with the first product and that didn't really work out. And I just opened a whole bunch of brands starting out because I just looked for opportunities. I didn't really look for building a brand or anything. Um, sorry, what was the question? Oh, so yeah. So once you have that, once you have a success, that might like blind you from what's really going on. So you want to take it like a step at a time. But also I think that what Emma, I'm trying to build the business that Amazon kind of wants me to build. Okay. That's, I'm always thinking, what does Amazon kind of want me to do? Because they're going to help me achieve it. Hopefully they are my partner. They're not the enemy. Okay. So what I'm doing is I building a brand, but on Amazon. Okay. So I'm actually building this brand on Amazon. So what that means is that if I sell to a customer, like let's say a new mom, okay, let's say that's the customer I sell to, I just, I'm just gonna sell more products to that same customer with my brand of products. That brand can have baby products, that brand can have supplements in it if I want, but it's all gonna be for this new mom that I sell, that I sell for. So I think that if you are starting out and you have, let's say, a few products, you kind of want, because Amazon is going to help you build that brand. You don't want to have like um, a brand name and then a whole bunch of unrelated products in that brand because Amazon is not going to help you cross sell those products. But if those are related to the same target customer, Amazon is actually going to help you sell those. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what you want to have in mind. And I have multiple brands and that's what we do with each and every brand. That's why we have separate brands and not just one brand with all the products under that one big brand, so. Got it, so in terms of um, scaling, what you're doing is you're really thinking about, okay, how does Amazon want me to be presenting these brands to the customer? How can I be a better partner for Amazon? What would you say is the biggest struggle for, you know, you're working with a lot of seven and eight figure sellers. What would you say is the biggest struggle struggle for people trying to scale? So before that, I will just say that a lot of also me included, I mean, myself included is when I started, I thought, okay, so let's say I launch, um, let's say uh, this is an example for one of my thoughts, but let's say I launch a yoga ball. Okay. Let's say that that's part of the launch. So I might think, okay, this works really well. Let me launch a yoga mat. That makes sense. That's like the next product in line. So I'm going to launch that. But what the biggest sellers are actually doing, and that's what works really well, is they just launch more of that same product, more of that same yoga ball. So let's say you launch a black yoga ball, that works great. They're going to launch a red, a blue, whatever color, and then they're going to launch a different size. Then they're going to do a bundle. Then they're going to do a whole bunch of things to launch more of the same thing, probably working with the same supplier, probably filling up containers, shipping it all together to Amazon. And all of that is just making so much more money. So what we, I call this going deep with a product. So you basically have a success, a success with a product and you just launch more of that same product. And at the same time, you want to grow wide as well. So you want to launch that yoga mat. You want to launch those yoga blocks, whatever it is, those other products that, um, that again are for the same target customer, because that's how you uh, grow the brand. And if you only sell the yoga balls, each customer is only going to buy one from you. But once you expand uh, like wide, then they're going to buy all of your products, hopefully. And that's what the big guys are doing. I, I've seen eight figure sellers having basically three products in their like, you know, store, but maybe like 20 different listings with a lot of variations under each of those or whatever. So that's what they're doing. They're not launching very different products every time, because if you launch a yoga ball and tomorrow you're going to launch our garlic press or a yoga mat. Those are the same. Those are completely different products, new set of keywords, new images, new everything. It's a different product entirely. And if you think your images work for one product, it doesn't mean you know how to do images for the second product, unless it's really similar. So that's really great advice. I mean, in terms of taking what's working for you and going deep and going wide. 
and, and going deep before you go wide, right? Because you want to make the most, you got to get the most bang for your buck out right. of, of that one I mean, product. It's already making like 10, 20 K a month. So why not make it make 80 or hundred K a month instead, just by doing that. It's exactly. that much easier than launching different products that a lot of those might fail, right? And then if one of your new products, as you're going wide, if it fails, you're not launching 10 variations at a time. You're going, oh, I launched the yoga mat. Turns out that didn't do so good for my customer. Yeah. I'm going to move on to this uh, cushion, meditation yeah. cushion and, you know, go from Whatever. there. And, you know, so I love that strategy. It's really awesome. And um, I'm definitely going to, I'm, I've got some to do's over here on my list. <laughs> so one of our listeners, Anna, wants to know what is your top method, your favorite way of doing product research? Have so Give us all the secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so I have like a lot of uh, methods to do product research, but basically I think what there are different ways you can kind of stay away from everyone else. And when it comes to product research, I think everyone is looking for that perfect product, which is like under two pounds, small, light, one piece, uh, selling between 15 to $50, let's say. And if you do find that product, great, good luck, because tomorrow you're going to have like a thousand new competitors uh, on your, <laughs> like on Amazon. So what I do is I'm just saying like to myself, okay, so what, where are they not looking? So, okay, under $15, over 50 or over $60. And they're probably going to look for easy to ship. So maybe I'll launch a heavy product. Maybe I'll launch a big product, like a big, cheap product that no one wants to sell. That's a great product. And if I can figure out to make it profitable and I can source it from China, great. That's all I need. I need to figure it out once and game over to everyone else, right? Because I just solved that problem and I don't really uh, care about uh, other things or launch like a hundred dollar product, right? That not a lot of sales want to touch. So I really like like those type of complicated sourcing uh, products. Uh, but when it comes to the method itself, one of the, uh, my favorite things to do is actually to niche down in like uh, what I call a saturated niche. So if you go back to the yoga ball example, one thing you can actually do is you can just launch a yoga ball for someone specific. So if you go to Amazon right now and type in yoga ball for pregnancy, for example, you will see someone selling a yoga ball for $45 instead of selling it for 10. And she just branded her listing to fit only one very specific target audience. And the reason that works is because the keyword search volume is there. So people are actually typing this in and are searching for it. And they're just, I mean, most of those are just going to buy the yoga ball with like 10,000 reviews, right? That's what the, most of them are going to do. But some of them are going to buy that one that is only for that target audience. And what they did, they also gave like non-slip socks with that yoga ball. And they also give like a video and a PDF and everything else. And the listing itself is only targeting this target customer. They're not saying, oh, by the way, this is also for men. This is also for <laughs> women. This is for everyone. They're not doing that. They're just targeting someone very specific. And this works only because there is search volume there and because it's a saturated niche already. So if you would sell like a very specific niche thing, let's say magic kits for women. Okay, let's say that's your niche. That's already very niche. So you don't really need to do uh, anything other than just doing that. Um, but other products, like saturated products, you kind of want to segment them uh, further. And then when, so this is why I think Amazon will not be saturated anytime soon, because whenever there is um, a saturated niche, a lot of sub niches keep popping up. And, and that always happens. This is always true for anything. Uh, if you think about any product, like the first car, right? When that came out, only black cars, Ford cars, whatever. And now you have all shapes and sizes for anyone, basically. So this is kind of what happens with every single product out there. So my next question for you is about profitability. You know, that is something that I've talked to seven and eight figure sellers and some of them state that their profits are not that great. <laughs> um, so what do you think is the biggest struggle in terms of profitability and what's a good fix for that when you're scaling your business? Yeah, so I think you first, you need to understand your cash flow mode, cash flow, sorry, more than anything. So when I started, I was looking only for products that are 100% ROI or higher. So return on investment 100%. That means that if I invested $5 landed in Amazon, I want to get $10 back 
after all the fees and everything else from Amazon. So basically doubled my money, right? I invested $10,000 in, in stock. Then I got $20,000 back. That's kind of what everyone is kind of saying and doing and whatnot. Now, seven and eight figure sellers, I see this happening a lot. They're looking, they're still looking for those products. And what I tell them is ROI is not very important when you have cash. You should focus a lot heavier on your gross margin per unit sold. And the ROI can actually be lower. What I mean by that is let's say you sell a product for $15. Okay. And it costs you like $3 to source. You can even get with very cheap products. You can even get to 200, 300% ROI. And this is what the beginners should focus on. They should focus on cheaper products or products with a much higher ROI because they don't have a lot to invest. They can double, triple their money every inventory that comes in, but the profit itself, the total profit is not very high. And that's okay because they're just starting out. But when you are more experienced, when you are more advanced, you should focus on your profit per day for the products you're launching. So if I launch a product for $100 that cost me, I don't know, let's say $30 or $40, I can even get like $60, $70 back. I'm still making $20, $30 in profit per unit sold. So the gross margin per unit is very high, but the ROI is under 100%. You understand? So this is what the big guys are doing. They don't really care about... So if you all, all you care about is ROI, right? Why sell for 15? Why not sell for $100, the product, and make like 1,000% ROI or whatever? That doesn't make any sense because you won't get any sales, right? You will get a sale every few months. So there is a balance between the ROI and like the profit you aim for. But what I'm saying is for the smaller sellers, they should only focus on ROI. The bigger sellers should focus more on profit per day and gross margin, launch those expensive products, launch those heavy products. Uh, those don't have to be heavy. Those can be like small electronic products or whatever, but this is what they should focus on more because they have the cash, they have the capital. So if you have like tight cash flow, focus more on those cheap products. If you don't have like cash flow problems, just focus on uh, gross margin. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.